Well, I was supposed to show you the graph of the cotangent function. This is the cotangent function here, and here we have, as you notice, look what's significant about this. Remember, the regular tan function was actually faced this way, right? That's kind of did a, doing a little reflective move right here, if you see, if you will. And so everything, of course, the period is going to be as pi. And let's just talk about some characteristics of this. You know, this is a nice, pretty, good-looking graph here. And so it has the similar characteristics of what? Of the tangent function. You see this, right? Similar character, uh, characteristics of that. However, with that, remember that with the tan function, it also has a period of pi, right? So remember now, just like the tan function, the cotangent function does not have an amplitude, okay? And the role of A is provided, it provides that the magnitude gives you what? A nice vertical stretch there. And so the role of B, remember, shows that there's a vertical shift, and a vertical shift is required when that's shown there, just like that. So get a nice little copy of this and, and see how this is really, really, really drawn. And maybe you want to practice on drawing the uh, cotangent function. This is a really nice function. I love the, uh, the uh, tangent function and the cotan cotangent functions. Uh, so let's talk about now graphing cosecant and secant functions. Now you remember these are reciprocal identities, isn't it? So cosecant x is equal to one over sine x, and of course secant x is equal to one over cosine x. So cosine cosine x. That's supposed to be an x right there, and we'll get a marker in just a bit. Uh, but the value of the cosecant function y is equal to what cosecant x at a given number equals the reciprocal of the corresponding value now of the sine function, provided that the value of the sine function is, is not zero. But if the value of sine x is zero, then x is an integer multiple of, of pi. At such numbers, the cosecant function is not defined. In fact, the cosecant function has a vertical asymptote at integers multiple of what? Pi. Now, let's look at these things here a little bit. These are some pretty good graphs here. So get a nice shot there. And let's take a minute or so to look at that. Take a minute or so to look at that. Take a few seconds to copy that too. As you notice, the pattern it has. It has a great pattern. And what is this function here? There's a familiarity there, isn't it? What is this function? At the origin of this thing, it starts at what? Zero, zero. Remember, where is that? What function is that? If we remember watching the earlier videos. It's the what? It's y is equal to sine x. That's just what that is. You see that? And of course, even though this graph is, cose is cosecant x, a basic function of cosecant, right, basic cosecant function, here you still have what? It's a, a reciprocal identity here. So you have some involvement, it has some uh, corresponding relationships here. So this is why this sine function is involved, you see. So the overall cosecant x, y is equal to cosecant x, is you got all your patterns are from negative 2 pi, and of course your asymptotes. x is equal to negative pi, uh, and you have x is equal to 0, x is equal to pi, and x is equal to 2 pi, so forth and so on. Now this will continue on, well this actually will come from negative infinity, and also continue on through the and this will go on to what? Positive infinity, the same way. Now, if you look at this very closely and try to get, if you can't get underneath and see what those coordinates are, we'll go to this one 
and we see that this is the what? This is the seeking graph. Now, let's go back here for a second and put our x right here, cosine x. And this is the y is equal to secant x. This is the secant. This is the secant x function here, if you see. Now, guess what? See, secant is a, a reciprocal identity, and it's 1 over cosine x. So look at this. What does this look like? Of course, at the origin, or at, the, uh, at this point here, we always kind of start right up on the, uh, on the y-axis somewhere. Well, at, it's usually at zip, well, 0. The, whatever the value is will be at 0. Right, whether it be one or two or three or, or however you, however, but depending upon this amplitude here of, of the graph. However, it always starts somewhere on the y, but at zero though, see? So that's how you know the significance of, of what, or distinguish the difference between the sine and cosine function. So in this particular case, this is the cosine function here that you see in black, right? And of course, all the other stuff will make this thing what? All the other uh, looping functions on top here meeting at the vertex of each of these small little parabolas here. That gives you the significance of what this is and why is equal to C connects. That gives you the actual look of what this graph is, this function is. So this function is secant x. And you know that you have some similarities here with actually, I say this dominated function here, which is sine, and this what? This uh, dominated function, function here, which is cosine. And they work together hand in hand with each other. That's why reciprocal identities. Now, you have, you have, have as cosine and secant, and you have sine and cosecant, which are inverses of each other. So since they're inverses of each other, this is what we have. We have this nice, beautiful graph here. And this, and this is an inverse, of course, uh, cosine is an inverse uh, uh, secant. Then you have this nice, beautiful picture of a graph here. And also, Cotangent and tangent are inverses of each other, but they're also co-functions of each other. So that's why we had that look, which this thing switches this way and has this type of look, as, a, as opposed to the tangent having a different uh, look as far as the positioning of the, graph, the waves. So without further ado, we want to talk about graphing of the cosecant function or talk, let's talk about this just for a second. We want to talk about its range, right? We talked about the graph a little bit, but we can talk a little bit more, but we're going to talk about the range and basically uh, some points, some very important points. Graphing functions of y of the form of y is equal to a cos cosecant omega x plus b, and also y is equal to a uh, secant omega x plus b. The role of a, again, in these functions is to set the range, right? It's to set the range, and the range of y is equal to cosine x. It is now the set of all y such that y is less than or equal to 1, or y is greater than or equal to 1. And so, or you can say, well here, set of all y, such that what we said y is uh, greater than or equal to 1, the range of this, of cosecant right here, or this function a times cosecant omega uh, x, is that here in this particular situation, because a is involved here, it's the set of all y such that y is greater than or equal to the absolute value of a. So due to the vertical stretch of the graph, it's by, the vertical stretch is caused by the factor of what? The absolute value of a. 
whatever that is, you know, whatever that value is. Not the amplitude though, but it's used to uh, as a magnitude to stretch uh, the graph of the tangent uh, and cotangent. And so, uh, what do we have here? We have just as with sine and cosine, the functions of period of y is equal to what? Cosecant omega x and y is equal to secant omega x. Due to the horizontal compressions, here we're talking about the horizontal compressions again, of the graph by the factor of 1 divided by omega, the presence of b indicates the vertical shift is what required. So remember, so let's go back slightly to this again. And here are those graphs. Here are those graphs. So, take a good look at that. And we will do, we'll do an example problem. So we have to go to the next room.